Hello everyone, so I have an update here on the Ukrainian Storm Shadow Strike on the Rapua class landing craft, the Novo Chikask. And at the end of the video, I'm going to also serve up some Yuletide Twaddle and a glass of Russian Copium, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy as well. First up, we have a photo of the damage, or rather, the devastation. This photo shows all the remains of the Novo Chikask. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, where's the ship? Well, it's hard to see because most of it is sleeping with the fishers. This image here, put together by a special Herson Cat on Twitter, highlights the visible parts. So its addition to Russia's submarine fleet has been a big success. The ship has basically sunk, with very little remaining. And the bits that are visible are looking none too clever as well. Russia has hilariously claimed this as just damaged. Now, we do have some satellite imagery from a few days before confirming this as a Rapua, rather than something else. Of course we have the photo of the wreck of the water, so it's not really needed, but I thought I'd take a look at it. Front Intelligence Insight shared this satellite image from the 24th, showing a Rapua class landing ship in the very spot that was hit. Now the target of the Storm Shadow Strike is this, the Novo Chikask, which was commissioned in 1987. It's a Rapua class landing ship. The Novo Chikask was also damaged at Berdyansk when Ukraine sank the Saratov with Tochki U during the early stages of the war. Now a few Russian sources have claimed that this wasn't an active ship. I will cover that a bit more in the twaddle section of this video. First some satellite imagery. First this image from October the 2nd showing a Rapua. Presumably the Novo Chikask docked in the same spot. You can also see a number of other naval ships here. Remember the presence of these as it ties in with some of the twaddle yet to come. Also, note the defensive booms at the harbour entrance, so this Theodosian base was protected from Sea Baby and Marine drones. And here is Theodosia on October the 18th. You can see the Rapua class ship has gone. So this was an active one, and this was its regular unloading port. We're not sure what exactly was transported here. But some reports are saying the one that was hit today was carrying Shahed drones. So if that's true, it's an even more successful strike than we thought. Now, before today's strike, the Black Sea Fleet had four Rapuas in service. The Azov, the Novo Chikask, which is the subject of today's video, the Caesar Kunikov, and the Yamal. We also had five Rapuas sent from other fleets, the Minsk, Korolev, and the Kaliningrad, from the Baltic fleet, and the Georgi Popadosets and the Alunagorsky Gorniak from the Northern fleet, making a total of 11. Of those 11, the Gorniak was holed and seriously damaged by a marine drone, and the Minsk got rogered by a storm shadow. The Gorniak was in dry dock at Novo Rossisk, but then disappeared. Some Russians claim it was put back into service, but considering the damage we saw, that's unlikely. It was very likely sent to Sevastopol a few days before the Minsk met its grisly end, with the intention to put it in the Minsk's dry dock, a plan scuppered by a storm shadow visiting the Minsk. However, it is possible that it is in dry dock now. This image by M.T. Anderson from December the 20th shows a Rapua class ship currently in dry dock at Sevastopol Harbour. I wonder if this may finally be the Gorniak getting repairs. Now let's get to the twaddle and the copium. First, this claim here, which has aged exceptionally well, made very early on while the ship was burning. Looks like an oil tanker was struck alongside the pier. Little blast damage, but an impressive fireball which may have been the point of this target, versus any number of military, useful things to hit. Of course, we have a photo showing this has been a destroyed repuer. So, surprise surprise, this shill is wrong. And in reply to the satellite image, we got this. Suggesting that the satellite imagery isn't reliable because the ship may have moved, which okay, is a fair point. We can't be sure until we get an aftermath satellite image. However, this is important as it ties into some next claimed copium. Now, you can see the narrative becomes, albeit from a different Twitter user admittedly, that this is a landing ship, but isn't in use in the war. So we've gone from the ship moving since the satellite image was taken and it being a tanker being hit, to instead, this being a Rapua that hasn't moved for ages and is inactive and therefore not important, which is false, 
we've just looked at satellite imagery showing it moving between dates. And there's also the massive ammo cook-off that we saw. Clearly, ammunition of some sort, possibly Shahed drones, were either on the ship or had just been unloaded. The twaddle continues. Now, here, it's a soft target for some reason. And here, trying to cope with Russia's S-300 and S-400s failing at their job again. This is just a port, apparently, with nothing of great value to target, except, of course, the massive landing craft that just got malleted. And here, nothing could stop Storm Shadow from hitting unprotected targets. And a little bit further down, this port doesn't serve a military purpose, and that ship isn't conducting military operations. It doesn't have air defence on board. So, we saw satellite images showing this port has a number of military ships in it. It may not originally be a military port, but Russia is using it for military ships now. If they have failed to protect it with SAM systems, then that's a major cock-up by them. However, it was lightly protected by SAM batteries and they just did what they do best, fail at the job. The ship isn't carrying out military operations, is one of the claims. So, what does he think was cooking off with a secondary blast? A bunch of teddy bears? It was clearly loaded with ammo, or had just unloaded ammo. Let's take a look at the SAM coverage claim. So we have known S-300 batteries at Cape Tarkincut and south of Sevastopol, shown in red. The Cape Tarkincut one has been hit before. Russia reportedly had five S-300 and S-400 batteries defending Crimea. I'm not sure of the location of the others. Presumably, one will be near the Crimean bridge to protect that. Also highlighted in green are key targets, air bases, Sevastopol Harbour, the Crimean bridge. All of which are going to have shorter range air defences of their own, panzers, books and tours. So, this is going to provide a pretty wide net of air coverage around Crimea. Crimea is covered. So to try and deflect and say Theodasia was unprotected is illogical. Crimea is brimming with sand batteries, and regardless of if they were positioned near Theodasia or not, it's a serious failing of Russia's to either, one, have some systems and radars that just failed at their job to intercept the storm shadow, or two, they left such sizable holes in their SAM network over Crimea that storm shadow could get through anyway. Not to mention, if these storm shadows were launched from north of Crimea, then they also had to bypass the Russian SAM network, protecting the front lines in Kherson and Zaporizhia, mainly carried out with books and tours and Strela 10s and Panzers and the like. And we have seen that this is a multi-layered SAM network, with geolocated footage of the SAM systems being destroyed. We've seen SAM systems close to the front lines, mainly, say, Strela 10 units, and also... Some systems further back, providing another layer of defence away from the front lines. For example, we've been seeing books destroyed 30 kilometres or so behind the lines. So there is a big SAM network, and that network failed to detect or intercept storm shadow here. So it's clear, Russia's SAM coverage either has more holes in it than, well, the Novo Chukask, or it just can't detect and intercept storm shadow which isn't a modern missile. Now here's one of my favourites, check this out. Novo Chukas was damaged while repelling Ukrainian attacks with guided missiles. First, faults. Novo Chukas doesn't have SAM systems on board. But the second part is my favourite. Hold on to your hats. Air Defence has destroyed two Ukrainian Su-24s which launched the missiles. That is the explosion that was filmed apparently. So you heard it here first. Not only does Ukraine have Su-24s launching a 300 km range storm shadow from like 100 meters from the target and within the SAM range, but we also have them used as boats since the explosions we saw were on the level of the water. This might be the biggest load of twaddle I've ever read. The sad thing is there are people who believe this nonsense. Likely the same sort of people who click on the Hot milfs in your area links when we visit Pornhub. Finally, let's finish with this one. Sergei Makarov is saying this is a blow to Britain and the US too. I won't read it all, but I've highlighted the fun bits here, where he blames the Anglo-Saxons. Seems like Sergei needs a history book written more recently than 1066. I can imagine him urging Putin to give Edward Ironside or King Ethelstan some Novichok by way of revenge. 
Now, that's it for this update. I'll update again if we get anything more to talk about here, such as satellite imagery. Before we finish out, I'm going to play a video about the ongoing fundraiser for the Ukraine Volunteer Centre, which is near its end now. One last push should complete it. So, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it interesting. Now, for people who got a copy of my book for Christmas, I'm going to do the draw that I mentioned to win a dinosaur tooth on January the 1st, so there's still time for you all to enter. Remember, just answer who is the first character mentioned in chapter 19 and email it to my email in the description. And if you're interested in reading a novel about dinosaurs, the links are in the description as well. Now, on to the fundraiser video. Thanks very much and take care everyone. Good afternoon, greetings from the Ukrainian Volunteer Center. Today we are announcing a new fundraising. Recently, there was a week of during the last artillery attack. A car in a combat is very necessary for timely change of position or evacuation. Two metal detectors and one generator for the guys from the 93 Bridget Holodny Yard. Generators are the main helpers of our fighters in the harsh conditions of war. We also need 1000 liters of DSL fuel for the third separate battalion of the Ukrainian Volunteer Army Voin. Fundraising goal is 50,650. For the highest donation, we will send a set of glasses with the logo of our found on the last logo of our found. We will also draw a second set of glasses using a randomizer among people who donate at least 12 dollars. 12 By the way, this uh, the last two sets with the previous symbols of our foundation. All reports will be posted as usual after the fundraising. Thank you for being with us and helping us. Thank you for your being with Ukraine. With love from Ukraine.